Today I am going to show you how I prepare accessories, weathering, create the ground, building a set of transport pallets and weathering them, composing the layout on the stand, adding some elements of the backyard, prepare the safety pins for the model and finishing the stand with some extra stuff. Hello my friends, this is Cold Demons PL, I am Lucas and you can watch it but at your own risk. Whoever watched the previous episode probably remembers that I have finished building the model and it's ready to be placed on the stand. But this stand is not available yet, so today we will start making it. The model is small, so the stand will also be small, but in order not to be boring there will be various accessories produced by Eureka XXL. I will start with the processing of Pelican cases which in all kits released to the market by the company consist of two parts. A thin piece of resin should be carefully cut off, but remember not to damage the edges and elements of the latches as well as they will be on the inside of the casting. These are the elements that I am talking about. Of course you have to be careful when cutting off the trimmings, because it's very easy to cut yourself and probably everyone knows how uncomfortable it's to work with bandaged finger. It's worth wet sanding at least the upper part of the tray where there are no snaps. Of course don't forget to thoroughly clean it from dust. It's best to glue both parts with slow drying glue so that you have time to correct the alignment if necessary. I used carpentry clamps to stick both parts tightly together. At this stage I glued the individual cases together because I planned that they would be placed on the diorama in such a position. Now the usual super glue is sufficient. And so I made the rest of the accessories. In addition I also found ready made barrels that save me some time. Of course there are also perforated concrete road panels to be laid on the ground, one concrete road slab and transport pallets, besides some small containers for chemicals. I drilled all the elements to put them on toothpicks because they are easier to handle while painting. Of course I washed everything in model degreaser which was necessary due to the treatment you have seen before. It took a while and I'm sure that after painting no debris will pop out. Remember, safety first. It's clear that the undercoat for all the elements was necessary and now I could choose the colors for the individual elements. I divided them into groups and as you can see I choose the right paints. It will be quite colorful. From the Eureka XXL set I took out decals with the markings of the dangerous liquids. I completed the appropriate set for the containers and of course to be sure each sticker has been impregnated with microscale sole. After drying I applied some more glossy varnish and started weathering. By the way there are also some hand painted numbers which let's say were done by soldiers.
The basic wash was done by diluting the black brown with a few drops of thinner. There is nothing to say about here, making a wash on such elements is a simple task. It was more interesting to do the weathering. Of course, as in the case of the model, I used the dirty dust weathering paint and applied it with a brush on the cases and other elements. I treated it like a wash because after applying it, I wiped off the excess so that it remained in the nooks and crannies. The effect was great and the boxes look as if they had been standing there for quite a long time and previously they were used in the field. After drying I covered all painted accessories with a matte varnish. Thanks to my father-in-law's kindness I got a wooden block which is perfect for a stand for my model. It was already satin varnished and made a good impression. I glued anti-skid pads on the underside and on the top for better grip I cut the surface with a knife. It was brutal. Now I could easily apply PVA glue and stick the plaster elements of the road and the square on. This single road plate was there for two reasons. The first one was completely prosaic. I missed a few perforated panels. The second resulted from the first and it turned out to be a great solution. Namely the entire ground composition benefited from this change. It's more interesting and not so homogeneous if only small plates were lying there. For even position I used a piece of glass that perfectly aligned the blocks. As you can see, a moment after placing them, they hold firmly and it's difficult to move a single plate. After a while I was able to mask the wood to take care of painting. The mixture of grey and white was enough to color all the plaster elements. The edges have also been painted. When I finished I immediately started filling the gaps. Super fine sand is perfect for this. I spread it over the entire surface. The diluted pigment cement served as a fixer to keep it in place. Here and there the air bubbles prevented the sand from drying well, but I will fix that in a moment. As soon as the glue sets better. Taking the advantage of a few minutes of break and waiting for... for what? For something, I started to build a set of transport pallets which are a great addition to all modern models. 
This is how the set looks like when disassembled and arranged in order of gluing. By the way, if I'm not mistaken, such pallets started to function after World War II, so using them on models from this period is a mistake. If not, let me know in the comments. The kit that I have here was produced by RB model and unfortunately it's currently very difficult to find if it's possible to find it at all. Its great advantage is the price and the fact that it consists of wooden elements. For the purpose of this video I put together one pallet from start to finish but in general I do it in series thanks to which I limit the time needed to build the entire set. As you can see the design is simple which gives us a super realistic looking element to enrich the stand. Building such a set takes about 20 minutes or 5 minutes for one pallet. I haven't made it faster yet. We remove the masking tape from the stand to check what the edge of the painting looks like. Unfortunately the wig glue allowed a bit of paint to flow underneath it and I have to clean the surface. A sharp hobby knife will be perfect but it's important not to damage the surface too much. The scent is already dry so I can add a little bit to places where it doesn't look as it should. The same process as before. I had more pallets done before and now I collected them to do weathering and some extra effects. First I will cover them with wash for wood in different proportions, just like in real life where the pallets are dirty in various ways. On some of them I painted colorful markings because there are companies which marks their stuff in this way and you can easily see them in piles of unpainted palettes because they definitely stand out. Super effects like splashes, scratched paint, spilled paint, traces of bars and other containers are a matter of our imagination and inspiration from real life. In general you can afford a bit of madness combined with finesse interspersed with advanced visual and technical solutions. <laughs> I love this stream of words. Ok, now without stupid jokes. Pay attention to how cool the wooden elements have soaked the wash and it looks natural. But hey, there is a rule, all should be painted. Yes, I know I said before that everything should be painted but this is the exception that proves the rule. The natural colors of the wood are perfect and no paint can replace it. It would be different with a plastic or resin kit, but it's another story. I set a large number of elements as planned on the stand and started gluing them together before they were glued to the stand. Super glue is essential for this. You can also use holes drilled before to mount the pins and use them to fix the parts on the stand. But that's more work.
I glued the finished sets of boxes to the stand and started adding the rest of the elements. The previously planned arrangement sped up the work and what you are watching now took me several minutes. The work is in progress and this is a good moment to mention my patrons and invite you to be my patron. Guys, you are the best, thank you very much. If you are wondering why it's so good, just check what benefits you can have when you support me. You can find the link in the description and at the end of this video. Of course the chain mustn't be missing, this time I used the bigger one from AK, which I painted with dark grey acrylic paint. I wrapped it in metallic pigment and glued it to the palette with a few drops of pigment cement. Some more tarps and thick ropes squeezed between the crates, the human factor in the form of an empty package of chips and I can take care of nature. A pretty dead nature. The leaves used here clearly shows the season of the year and there is no doubt that it's autumn, but quite dry. The ones visible here weren't completely separated so it took a while to work on them. However, it didn't bother me because I think it's even better if someone wants to use them as a soil cover in the forest. Whatever it is, they are great and have the right shape. The same with second set. These leaves are a little larger and have a different color. I mixed them up and that was a good move. Now I have variety and really like the effect. After putting on the stand I soaked them all with glue and the use of the accelerator verified if I missed any place. The model must be well attached to the base but using the screw was out of the question so I decided to put it on pins just like the figures. The holes in the tires were large enough to hold the pin and prevent the model from sliding off the base. The hardest thing to hit is with the correct measurement of the holes. Of course you can play with accurate measurements with a ruler but experience tells me it won't work perfectly and it's worth doing it as simple as possible.
By the way, when I was vacuuming the dust, I could see how strong is the joint of pigment cement. A moment of true. One is done, and the second is, is, done. Due to the large areas on the wooden block, I decided to add photos of a real vehicle. I have been using this idea for many years and I was probably one of the first who uses it on the basis more than once and in my opinion it looks great. I stick the photos on double sided tape which isn't so aggressive and invasive like glue and I always order matte photos so as not to leave fingerprints on them. On the front wall I stuck a specially prepared inscription for this project and the sticker with the German flag. I copied this from my idea shown on the thumbnails for the videos of this series. It looks mega and I'm very happy with the effect. The final result in a moment but first I would like to thank you for watching. If you think that I deserve a subscription, like or comment, feel free to do so. And now this is how the whole thing looks like. Enjoy! That's all for today my friends, see you next Monday, cheers!